Hi, welcome back. If you're new, my name is Dave Thomas, also known as 7 Sharp 9. And today's going to be a new video in the F Sharp Mono Game series. We're going to be further developing the game so that instead of looking like a top-down game, it's going to start to look like a proper platform game. We're going to actually start to implement a different sprite sheet so it actually looks like you're jumping on platforms. And also we're going to start to look at collision detection. The system that we're going to use is something that was used in Little Big Planet, and it's called Speculative Contacts. And it's it's based on some of the mathematical concepts of Minkowski difference, and we're going to slowly go through that in this episode and talk through some of the code involved in it. I may do some future episodes that embellishes this a bit further because it can be quite fiddly to describe and get through in a single episode. So maybe some subsequent videos with maybe some animations on kind of like how it works and uh, how it's calculated might be helpful. Um, we'll see how this goes first. I mean, feel free to drop any comments if I didn't describe anything sufficiently and I'll try to address that in a future video because it's quite a lot to squeeze in a, a short, bite-sized 10 to 15 minute video. Um, in other news, um, this channel recently hit 600 subscribers. Woohoo! Um, I'd just like to say thanks to everybody who's subscribing to the channel and if you're not and you're um, not currently subscribing, why not subscribe? Um, but now we'll like to get into some of the coding. First thing we're going to do is add a new project reference to Monogame Extended. So we use the .NET tool to do this. As usual, we've renamed this to Monogame 5 and Game 5. And next, we're going to open the reference to Monogame Extended. Then we're going to define a record type called AABB, which is an axis aligned bounding box. And we're going to add a few members to that for the minimum and the maximum and also the size. As usual, we'll also add a create member to help us create these records. The next thing is a rigid body. This is going to describe the attributes of the physics within our world, the mass, the inverse mass, and AABB velocity, whether it's on the ground or, and also the state of whether it was on the ground last. The next thing we're going to add is a contact. This has a rigid body A, a rigid body B, a normal, a distance, and an impulse. And this is to model the interaction between two rigid bodies when they are colliding. The normal represents the direction of the impact. So now we need to do a little bit of maintenance. We can remove a lot of these things from the animation key because in our platform game, we don't need to process any of the directions other than left and right. We we'll just fix up all of these errors. We can delete the old player and rename new player to player. Fix the indentation. Rename more of these. We could have used a rename command, but it's just quicker just to go through and change each one for me while I'm scrolling through. In our animated sprite, we can get rid of position and we can add jump and rigid body. We can now fix up the position by using the rigid bodies aabb.min, which is the new top left position. We need to add a couple of new things here. One of those is gravity and the other one is a maximum speed. Next thing that we're going to do is add some new terrain. So this is from opengameart.org again, and this is the texture that we're going to use. I'll put these both in the description too. So let's change this to desert, and we'll change the, the tile set size too. Let's get rid of all the tiles, and let's paste in some new ones. So that was 60 tiles wide by 28 tiles high. At this point, we're going to create the rigid body for the player. If you notice, we're using a width and height of 48. This is to make sure that the tile size is slightly smaller than the background tile so the player doesn't get stuck. And also the player sprite is visibly a lot smaller than 64 by 64. Now we can update the player to include the um, jump velocity and also the rigid body we just defined. There's just a couple of things left to fix. Rename these few here. Set this to the rigid body center for the camera update. Let's get rid of position because we'll add that later. New position is the same, we'll actually calculate that soon. We don't need movement vector because we're going to write a new one now. 
So this code is slightly different to the last code in that it doesn't use a normalized vector calculator from the keyboard input. We're just using a fixed x and y velocity, but we're only applying the y velocity if the player's already on the ground. This is the stop like, like a, a jetpack kind of movement where the player will go upwards in the air continuously because obviously you can only spring upwards when you, you, your feet are planted firmly on the ground unless you do have a jetpack. So that's the big main difference here. It should be fairly self-explanatory anyway. Let's delete get movement vector because we're no longer using that. I'm now going to add a couple of helper functions to the tile set module. The first one is tile to world. It's a really easy calculation because we're just tip multiplying the tile width by the x parameter and the tile height by the y parameter. The next one is 2AABB. This is so we can convert tile to a, an actual bounding box. The first thing we need is tile in world, which is a top left hand coordinate, which we already defined previously. Next we need the extent, which is really easy to work out. It's just the width of the tile divided by two. Now we can create our AABB by using the top left coordinate plus the, plus the extents to define the center and the extents to define the extents. Let's fix up this indentation, which just seems to have um, crept out. The next thing we're going to do is calculate the broad phase tiles we need to consider collisions against. If you imagine your player position as the red circle and the velocity direction as a black arrow, and we enlarge the AAB by the velocity, then we actually get a rectangular area which we could test for a collision. So now we're going to write a function called get broad phase tiles, and this function takes in a minimum and maximum vector, and this would correspond to the top left and bottom right of an AA. BB bounding box, and it would calculate all the tiles within our tile layer, which is within that area. We're slightly rounding down and rounding up the tiles to make sure we get the full area without to, to account for any overlaps. This function is very similar to what we wrote before to calculate the tiles during the drawn phase, so I'm not going to explain it in any, any further detail here. I'm just going to add a binding called DT, which is the total seconds, because we use this quite a lot. So now we're going to calculate the player's velocity due to movement and gravity. To do this, we simply add the, the movement velocity with the gravity. We also define a clamp function to make sure they're not going too fast in the x or y axis. We use four times for the jump axis and two times for the y, the fall and gravity axis. Next, what we'll do is we'll create a copy of the rigid body for the player. We'll reset the ground and on ground last and set the velocity to the one we just calculated. Now we can scroll up and start defining collision module and some functions that we can calculate the player's new velocity with. So this function actually feeds into the broad phase one. We're actually creating the bounding box to pass to the broad phase function. First of all, we've got a predicted position, which is really just the, the center of the AABB plus the, the velocity times by time. And then we use this along with an expansion to find the minimum maximum positions. Right at the end here, you can see that we've actually used the get broad phase tiles and we've passed in the minimum and maximum. And we're going to pipe that into the list choose function, but we don't actually have a function for this yet. So I've currently just used none, but let's write the inner collide function now. In this function, we need to determine if the actual tile type is a valid one for a collision and we also need to create a rigid body for the tile. This in turn leads us to another function where we need to compare two AABB bounding boxes and decide if they actually collide. One of the first things we need to do in this function is, well two things, we need to calculate the normal and also calculate the distance. To calculate the distance we use something called the Minkowski difference. We shrink one of the AABBs down to a point and then we grow the other one by the extents of the first one and then all we have to do is find the distance between the point and the new AABB. So this is really easy to do. We just add the half extents of B onto the half extents of A. Next, we can calculate the delta by subtracting the center of B from the center of A. Normal is calculated by taking the major axis from the delta and negating it. Plane center is calculated by multiplying the normal by the combined extents and adding B, A, A, B, B center. And the plane delta is calculated in a similar way by subtracting the center of A's A, A, B, B from the plane center. The distance is now a simple calculation of the dot product of the plane delta and the normal. We can now create a contact using the properties that we just created. Before we can continue, we need to consider internal edges in our collision detection algorithm. 
we need to determine if the next tile in the sequence should or should not be considered as part of the collision procedure. To do this, we calculate the next ID of the tile in the normal direction. And if the tile has no identifier, it, it's an empty tile. So we return false. Otherwise, we return true, which indicates an internal collision. So now we can jump back to the AABB check and we can return whether there's an internal collision and also the contact too. This also means we can finish the inner collide function, so we can use the AABB function and we can return whether there's a collision or not. Now that we have a collision, we need to work out how to calculate the collision response. We're going to use a speculative solver, which I've included in the description for this video. We're also going to calculate the tangent for the normal, which is the perpendicular direction. We're going to use this to apply friction, but only for the x-axis, because obviously we don't want friction applying when you're falling down a cliff face. Now we can add the collision response to our inner collide function. And now we can apply the inner collide to our collision function. And now let's write the speculative solver function. First of all, we get the normal, which is the inverse of the contact normal. Then we get a relative normal velocity between A and B. And if normal velocity is greater than zero, then we abort early and return the contact. Otherwise, we remove just enough velocity for the two A and Bs to touch. Next, we'll calculate an impulse, which takes into account the mass of the two A and Bs. Then we accumulate this with the previous contacts impulse. This is in the case where you're in this solver for more than one iteration. Finally, we compute the change, which is the contact impulse subtracted from the new impulse. Then we start all those details in the contacts and return. This is a really brief description of what happens. And if you read the linked article, it goes through this in a lot more detail. And I may revisit this in a future episode if there's call for it. Now we can scroll down to the update function and finish writing it. First thing to do is we can now use the collision function that we just wrote. What we have to do is we need to sort by the distance from the contact. This is to ensure that we pick the contact that's the closest. Otherwise, we're using a contact which isn't relevant. We do this with the list sort by function. After that, we use list try head to select a potential head. And then we really just extract the velocity and the on ground and on ground last. In the case where there is no match for the head, we simply use the old velocity and on ground and on ground last properties. The next part is just adding the velocity to the current player's position and doing a clamp based on what, what we've done before. We're really just clamping to the edge of the screen. And now we can just update the rigid body of our player with the new details we just calculated. Now we can hit debug and try this out. So if we jump off the platforms and um, move about around the level, you can see that we appear to land and collide with things, but the player's position is slightly out. So let's fix that now. I scrolled back up to the animated sprite draw function, and we just need to add a bit of an offset to the draw vector. So let's run this again to see what this effect has. That looks a lot better. The player is actually resting on the ground when he's moving about. So this looks to be exactly what we want. The final thing we can do is actually draw a little rectangle around the player so we can visualize where he's actually being drawn to. We do this with draw rectangle within sprite batch, which is added by Monogame Extended. There we go. You can actually use this as a, as a better guide. And sometimes it's worth spending a lot of time adding these kind of diagnostics to the game so you can actually see what's going on. One thing I'd also like to say is a big thank you to all my patrons. They make this channel possible by helping me to buy software and hardware to make the channel even better. So a really big thank you to everybody who support me. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, then I've um, included the description in, um, in the description. <laughs> so um, check that out anyway. So if you made it this far, why not subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you can um, get notifications for any future videos, smash the like button as hard as you possibly can, and I will see you next time.